Hello Vogue, my name is Sharon Williams. I'm the head of wardrobe on the international tour of Phantom of the Opera. This is our first section. We call this wardrobe village. This is where the costumes live. This is the female ensemble side. So, um, as you can see, we've got plenty of space because we're in the arena, so we've spread out. Everything's really big. So each person's costumes live in these wooden travel boxes, which we call gondolas. And we organise them in order of the numbers in the show. So this would be the first costume and this would be the last costume. Their hats and their masks live on top and their shoes live down the bottom. And we've just got a little cheat sheet, we would call it, as to if you knew what number was coming. So that we just write that down. And then we have these little bags which we keep accessories and masks, etc. in. And then when we do the quick changes, we would place them on the floor and the performer would step into them. Most things are done here in the village. Wigs are set up here. All the quick changes are done on stage. So come on, I'll take you through to the men's department. So this, this is our men's department and it's organised in exactly the same way. Each actor's name is here and each costume goes from front to back. We've also got these little clever hooks so you can hang the next costume. This is our new Christine Hannibal costume, which we've just had made in London. Oh, it's quite heavy. It's actually made, it's actually rigged to be a quick change. So it has a little mark on the front, a little cheat. So that's the front inside. And, and two of the actresses put it on during the number. I'll try and do it for you, hang on. So. Am I in? I don't know, I'll hold it. But it's set on a frame, so when Christine walks, she doesn't stand on it. I'm not gonna show you the back because I haven't quite got it done up. Uh, and she's wearing point shoes as well, which are in the box behind you. But all this fabric is, uh, is um, sorry, Indian sorry fabric. A lot of it comes from Leicester in, uh, in the UK. And it's all hand stitched. So this is beautiful. This is one of my favorites. And I love the color of that one too. Uh, I'm gonna prop it there. What else do I like? I like the, oh, I like these. Let me show you this. So these, let's dig deep. Our Bally girls wear these. And they're called um, Hannibal Slave costumes. And they're all the same color. So the green and the gold and the red are our Hannibal costumes. So if you ask me which, which costumes are hard to maintain, these beads are the hardest thing to maintain. Luckily, I don't have to do this, but Alex and Ellie are two. You can see one's broken already. So these have to be hand painted because all of the paint comes off them. Look, they, they break all the time. On stage they look amazing, but they're really not my favourite. And then they have these um, these beads. And these attach on the front. Unfortunately, sometimes the ballet girls kneel on them during the show, so that breaks them as well. These are their point shoes, which they actually look after themselves. And what we do on our show, we don't use rosin, which is a traditional way to... Um, non-slip so we actually have them rubbered like normal shoe rubber and all the girls sew their own elastics on and some people have ribbons and toe pads but they look they, they look after all of that themselves I'm trying to think their cost their tutus are out here these are all so ballet girl and they've got lots of layers underneath. The great thing about this show, I have to say, is that all the elements of design, of Maria's designs, are based on real opera costumes, real ballet costumes. So they're not, they're not fake or pretend, they're actually real costumes that people would have worn traditionally period-wise. This, for example, is the Phantom's Chinese robe. So he wears this in the lair 
And it was very traditional at, at that time of the show that people would wear these ornate Chinese, you know, costumes and a hat and the, you know, embroidery and things. So it's all very true to the period, I would say. I do like this one as well. And then there are Christine costumes. She, most of the Christine costume um, changes are quick changes, so we keep them here. And I know you wanted to know which was the quickest change, is this one. This change is the Christine wedding dress change, and we can do it in 18 seconds, because it's all, it's all built. It's all built together, and we have a zip at the back, which is a real cheat but she comes off, she steps into it, and it's a four-person change. So there's three people from the costume department and one person from the wig department. It's really heavy and it's really structured, but that's a quick change. But actually, once you get into it, it's really, it's really easy. It just looks more impressive than it is. And this is another one of her ooh, weighty costumes. This is her Don one. So it's very Spanish, as you can see. Lots of embroidery, lots of beads, which quite often gets caught in her hair. So it's got a little bit of invisible mesh to stop that from happening. Okay. This is the Hannibal scarf. Now this is, I think this is our new one. These are hand dyed or hand printed. They're printed on both sides as well. And she does the dance in Hannibal with these. So I don't know if you can see it close up but they're all printed by hand and then fringe. So this is lovely. Imagine that on stage. It does need a steam, I have to say, which it does get steamed after every shot. Let me just pick up, let me just pick the green one up. And this one, she wears this one. And she, this, this is so long, look how long it is. The only problem with the costumes on this show is because they're so long, um, and nobody wears, obviously walks around in these kind of long period costumes. We're so used to modern clothes and people standing close to us that so many times when the actresses are walking, someone is standing on the back of their costume, which either rips the bottom of their costume or jerks them back. And it, it, it's, it's, it happens on every show where people are just not used to not getting that close to each other. So that's one of our biggest problems is repairing the bottoms. One, they get dirty because they get dragged along the floor and two people stand on them so all the nice trims and things come off. I mean, look at the crowns. You, won't, you, you will literally not see the detail on these crowns. And they're all, you know, the beads come off, you have to re-bead them, repaint them. This is, this is called actual crin and it's, the pin it's pinned through the wigs so that's what keeps it and they're all different designs um, all the different ones are different designs the Carlotta one's the biggest which is here oh, let me get you that for you this is the, so I think really from a distance you're not going to see you're not going to actually see these you see them and think you probably won't see the individual detail. But this is the, these are all the Carlotta costumes. There's so much detail in all of her costumes. Like, this is her little bat mask, got little eyes. And there's so much going on in Masquerade and so many beautiful costumes that you, you, would, you would miss something like this. This is her headdress. She's got two, actually. So, and these, these break all the time. They're so fragile that you end up having to re redo them. So we do a lot of work. Most of our work in the costume department is during the day when no one else is in the theater. And we come in and we repair, we do the laundry, we repaint shoes, we, we do so much. But if you work in a costume department, this is actually a dream job because there's so much. There's so much to do. There's so much to work on. You know, and we have to really have good skills, shoemaking skills, millinery skills, and also a good sense of humour. Because when you come, when you're working on a show like this, and there's lots of performers, lots of different countries, lots of different age groups, and lots of people rushing and being quick, 
that you have to be the calm person. If someone's coming to a quick change, you have to be the person who's calm and has a steady hand. And that's a skill that not many people have. It's not really a, a job that you can be trained for. You can only train to do it as you work on a show. You can, there's nowhere that can teach you how to quick change someone and not have your hand shake when you're doing a, a zip. So we're very lucky to be here. It means, it means a lot of different things because you get to know the performers very well on a, on a personal level and you know when someone's upset and you know when someone's nervous so you really have to be able to be the calm person because this is where they're nervous before they go on stage so their fear comes out in in their costumes or their shoes like sometimes you know their, their fear can mean that they think they've got someone else's shoes on even though they're theirs or their costume doesn't feel quite right and it's really just their fear so you have to be able to um, do your job and remain calm and and just know that person isn't really complaining they're just nervous about you know the performance so that's that's an interesting one we call it turning your ears off so you're doing your job, but you're not really listening to, you know, the background or what's being said. So this has been your visit to the backstage costume area on Phantom of the Opera at the Taipei Arena. We're very excited to be here and we hope that you all enjoy the show and enjoy all our beautiful costumes also. Thank you.